Hello and welcome to the tutorial about adding blend shapes for things like eyebrows onto your character. Now I've already done this and I want to show the, um, the final outcome and then we can go back and take a look at how this was done. So I like to use the old blend shape editor, I'm just used to it, but there's another way of looking at these when you come up here to animation editors and go down to shape editor, same thing over here. And uh, I tend to group them under eyebrow expression or this expression or that expression, just because expressions is so general that you can put everything under it, but this allows you to collapse things that you're just not dealing with and focus instead on what you are dealing with um, instead of having everything as a, as a huge kind of dizzying laundry list. The other thing I'd like to point out that I'm going to be improving in this is this is named as per the mesh name. And some of these just don't work, like orange, what does that mean, I don't know. The prefix here should be the first thing that kind of tells you what the uh, emotion is, because if this is truncated or if this is shortened or whatever, it's kind of the only thing you need to see. Eyebrow, mad, apart, lowered, etc. So um, this has some mistakes in it, and I want to show them off before we redo this so you can see how to do it to make it a little easier on yourself. But again, um, the thing I also do is I tend to make a blend shape per eyebrow, and they're really general. They tend not to work together, such as if one's down, the other one's up. I don't like to do that because what happens is that sometimes the um, animator just wants a one eyebrow down for whatever reason. <clears throat> I also tend to go past things to give the uh, user more to do, the animator more to do, in case they ever, say, bring the eyes down, and then they put on a blink, left and right, and the eyes go down like that, then in this case the eyebrow going down further actually makes sense. So I tend to overshoot a bit. Also blend shapes just go from one target to the next, and this character has just a little bit of space that the eyebrow is floating off, and I think it works because it is sort of a stylized character. So make sure that you have enough geometry, and secondly make sure that this uh, plane, this surface plane is straight enough that if you um, make a blend shape, it's not going to penetrate the head like so. The eyes were actually rigged slightly differently to allow um, the, to slide along the head here like this because they're actually on the geometry. Ooh, you can see some weighting issues there. Anyway, let's jump in and, and focus instead on the issue for the brows, how to put them in, and to make sure that everything is working copacetically with this character, but to uh, give them back their eyes. So I'm going to read in the original character down here which is custom face number 10 <clears throat> and come in. This character does not have any eyebrows and does not have any um, blend shapes for the eyebrows. So you can see that when I move them away, the eyebrows yet remain like rogue caterpillars. So first thing I'm going to jump in here and just rename them eyebrow left geo. That's perfect. Eyebrow right geo. Wonderful. So um, first things first, let's make sure that they are beholden to the blend shape. And the way I'm going to do this is make sure the skeleton layer is selectable. Select just the head, bone, and skin that in there. I'm going to bind the skin. It only should belong to one um, bone, which is the head bone. That's the way I'm doing this. And it's just the selected joint. So boom, it now goes with the character. If I move them over on the side, the eyebrows should go with. Wonderful. So that's done. The next thing I want to do is to identify it here in the outliner. I've got it selected. I open up the outliner and press F. It takes me right to the geometry, <clears throat> left and right. Uh, eyebrows are selected. I duplicate them. I then unparent them so they're free floating. And I come up here and I want to make sure that they are both um, unlocked. I'm just right clicking on all of the channels here and then going down to unlock selected. So these are our original bits of geometry. The way I like to do is drag them out. Um, they are renamed eyebrow left and right geo. We already have geo. I'm just going to rename it mesh. You can rename it whatever you want. In fact, in this case, let's name it original, O-R-I-G. That's just kind of pops from space when I uh, make it all caps, and I like to do that. Make them into a group, and then modify the pivot point so it's kind of in the center of it, just for ease of use. And I can say eyebrow underscore originals. And those will go under a larger set, which is eyebrow blend shapes. So everything kind of has a way, a, a, a section here. Oh, 
I've named them blend shape heads, blend shape. So I'm going to cut and paste so that it has uniformity here. Eyes, eyebrows, even plurals. Let's do that. Okay, so I've got the eyebrows original. Just for clarity, I'm going to make the center pivot there as well. I've got the original. I can now copy that original. Just D and D again. I'm going to grab them and pull them down a bit. Now this is going to be important. I need to name the groups and also the subset within the groups. So let's just name this eyebrow lower, lowered. And the other one will be, um, let's just name them angled, or I think most people understand it as mad. That's when they're di uh, got an angle there. You might, folks might be hearing thunder in a minute. It's raining in California. Good grief. Zeus is happy. So um, the reason I'm doing very minute changes to this, I'm not doing anything dramatic, is because I want the animator to have a choice of what to do. And uh, way early on when I was doing this technique at Oddworld, the person I was working with um, made it so that every time the character was mad, other things happened, like their ears flared. And the problem is that I sometimes wanted the eyebrows to look mad without the bloody ears flaring. So you can go through these and rename them, but first of all, let's remember callback number one to the way that these are gonna be named is gonna be what happens to them. So if I put lowered in the beginning here, I'm gonna see that before I see anything else in the blend shape choice. Goodness, another bit of thunder. Cool. Um, it never rains in Southern California. So if I grab this, just cut and paste, I can do this with cutting and pasting and sorting it so it's in the in the, the prefix. But there is another way of doing this. You can actually grab the parent if you want, go up here to modify and put in prefix hierarchy names and just type in the word mad underscore and it'll rename the two things below it. Now, to me that's a little redundant because you got mad eyebrow mad. <laughs> which is fine. And if you wanted to box clever, you could even do something like this. Um, go up to modify and search and replace names. And in this case, I'm gonna come in and uh, I'm gonna put a T underscore a ridge into T. Now look what it's gonna do. It's gonna grab these two left and right and just get rid of the word orage. So hierarchy and then apply. Boom, got rid of those. I can do the same thing here because I don't need it. Apply and eyebrow origin, that I need. So here I'm gonna have matte eyebrow, eyebrow lowered, and this should be widened. So let's just give it a prefix. Um, prefix widen, underscore. Okay, and widen, eyebrow widen. Sounds like bad poetry. Widen, eyebrow widen. Mad eyebrow, eyebrow lowered. Let's just be consistent here. There we are. All right, so the front loading here is necessary because all the work should be done in a way that allows you the ease of getting to what you want um, later without having to dig through a whole bunch of uh, different blend shapes. And we're going to do subtle tweaks to each so the animator can mix and match and get exactly what they want when they want it. So what I've chosen to do is some very simple things. The, the eyebrows are going to be lowered. Now, I can. how do I do that? If I move them down, it's not going to move them down in a blend shape because the blend shape doesn't understand translations of the object itself. What the blend shape does understand is that uh, you can actually lower it using vertices. So I'm just grabbing all the vertices and lowering them down that, about, to about there. That's just sort of an arbitrary distance and best seen by this, the front view here. So I can match it roughly when I grab the vertices on this one as well. So those are now lowered. I think I've still got soft select on. Give me a second to check. Nope, I don't. And I'm gonna do the same things for mad, only this way I'm gonna grab the vertices and rotate them. That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to give them a little rotation like so because if I make it too extreme then the animator may have some extra pops and ticks in there that they just don't want. So go subtle and let the animator uh, make it as crazy as they want but don't do everything in one blend shape is what I've learned uh, as an animator too. So in each of these manipulations 
I'm not just making it so that the animator can say widen the eyebrows or make them go down. Um, I'm making it so that they can use the opposite value as well and bring them together. So let's see how that works. Uh, I've got all my blend shape eyebrows and in one fell swoop, I'm going to come up here to object mode, select everything on the left and then select the eyebrow and come up here to deform blend shape and I'm going to give it a name which is eyebrow, um, this is left, and then expressions. That's it. That's all I want to do. Boom. And if I want to check, again, I come into blend, my blend shape editor, and yep, there they are. And more importantly, why not just give them a validation real quick? Okay, that's widen. And that's, I don't know what the heck that is, but it doesn't seem to be working. And angry oh because I grabbed the original oh you stupid you stupid person um, so luckily you can delete these as well so this is the one I want to delete Bink. and now I have relevance to each of these raising and lowering and moving uh, angry and watch this negative value here if I put in one if I put a negative one I'm sorry so now we have a whole a much larger range of emotion than we originally thought just by dint of keeping things clean and simple and not trying to make a slider both lower and angle and this and that because sometimes the animator wants to um, just have a one or a negative value. So moving on, not making the same mistake, grab all the shapes first and the shape it's going to last and coming to deform blend shape. Uh, same thing in this case, it's eyebrow right expressions and then there we are I like to use the old the old school blend shape editor um, again you folks can do the same thing just by typing in blend shape editor remember it's camel case give it a semicolon and then you can put this up into your save script to shelf or you can just grab the newer one which is here under windows and you go to general editors sorry animation editors shape editor same thing different way of arranging it and uh, again, all the names now are in the beginning, and it lets you collapse these things you don't want to deal with. And it lets you focus just on the expression from widening the eyebrow to making it mad to also typing in a negative value here. Watch this. I'm sorry. Or make it more extreme, negative two. Wow, he's really sorry. Um, it looks like it's kind of bloating the geometry, so you want to be aware of that. Uh, lowered eyebrow, negative one, raise the eyebrow. Hmm, I am suspicious. And I can also go into widen the eyebrow, uh, negative one, bring it over a bit. So you really have a large range of things to do just by making the moves subtle and not trying to do everything at once. I've given the animator a lot more to play with. And ultimately you can just grab these blend shape eyebrows, uh, blend shapes as a whole rather, and just put them into their own layer and call them blend shapes underscore layer and color them if you want save and then we can just make them go away so we don't have to see them uh, always especially when we just we just want to see well, I don't want to see that camera either get out of here camera and all I wanted was a Pepsi so okay no yes F. There we go. So there we go. Works with the character. Let's pop back to perspective. So we have one last step here, which is if you move this character around, what? Rogue Caterpillar indeed. Get back on my face, you. Oi. So the problem is that Maya is getting confused about its order of operations with that geometry. And that is because we skinned it first and then we added a blend shape and Maya gets confused when you do it in that order. What you can do is check out the inputs on that geometry to make sure that those are sorted out. And I like to do a real simple um, way of doing that is one of these little hidden menus in Maya. I know, there's the, I know there's the menu equivalent, but here's a really fast shortcut. Just right click on the geometry and go down to uh, inputs and then go down all the way to all inputs and it'll show you the order of uh, effects. 
and it does the top first. It sort of takes precedent. And right now the blend shape is taking precedent. We need the skin cluster to take precedent. And the way you do that is middle click on that choice, raise it up, drop it. If that doesn't work, gr then grab the top one, middle button, and lower it and drop it there. That seems to work out. Let's see if it worked out. Watch that eyebrow, folks. Yeah, okay, good. That one's fixed. The other one, not so much the fix. So let's do the same thing and grab the lower skin cluster, middle mouse button, drag it up until you see the marching ants there, and then boom. It does not, doesn't like me. Grab the top, lower it. That works. There we are. So now we get to test this and Bob Jarunkul. It works perfect. So that is how you want to do these. Um, this setup for blend shapes, and I like this one also because it res it's got a button for resetting, which I've, I've always enjoyed. Anyway, folks, I hope you get um, some insight on rigging out of this as well as a way to add blend shapes to your character even after it's rigged and even after it's in the middle of production, this should not be destructive. Uh, happy animating!